today we'll be testing the ray tracing performance of the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT. We'll see if we can keep up with the impressive raster performance that we saw in my last video. I'm Scott and you're watching Ultrawide Tech. The specific card we'll be testing today is the Sapphire Pulse AMD Radeon RX 7900 XT. It's a nice feeling card that runs cool and quiet. If you want to see more details about the build and how it differs from the reference design, check out my raster video where I covered this in more detail. Today we'll be testing this card across five games. We'll be testing the raw ray tracing performance and the ray tracing plus upscaling performance, and we'll be doing it across four resolutions. They will be 4K ultrawide, 1440p super ultrawide, 1600p ultrawide, and 1440p ultrawide. Now, let's take a look at the test system we'll be using, and then let's get into the benchmarks. Today, we'll be testing the AMD RX 7900XT using our AMD R7 5800X 3D test system, running G-Skill Trident Z DDR4 3200 memory at low latencies on Windows 11 using the latest AMD Adrenaline Edition drivers. Now, let's see some rays be traced. The first game we're going to put through the ray tracing gauntlet today is Cyberpunk 2077. We are using Alto Ray Tracing preset, which means ray trace reflections, ray trace sun shadows, and ray trace local shadows are on. Here we see that these ray trace effects are brutal on our performance, with all resolutions running under 30% of their raw raster performance, leaving this game unplayable at all resolutions. When we turn on FSR quality mode, we see a very impressive gain in performance over the raw ray tracing result, with the 4K ultrawide results coming in at a 99% improvement over no SFR, and the other results doing not much worse. 1440p Super Ultrawide was 85% performance improvement, 1600p Ultrawide was 80 and 1440p Ultrawide was 76%. Even with such impressive performance gain, with minimal picture quality loss, 4K still remains unplayable at a very cinematic 25 FPS. 1440p Super Ultrawide and 1600p Ultrawide are stuck in unacceptable gameplay territory with 34 and 39 FPS respectively. Finally, our 1440p Ultrawide barely makes it over the acceptable frame rate line, despite providing the largest visual impact of any of the ray tracing modes on any of the games tested. I can't recommend using the ray tracing at any of our Ultrawide resolutions in Cyberpunk 2077. Next up is Forza Horizon 5, which handles ray tracing in a very interesting way that I think works fantastically in this game by maximizing impact while minimizing performance loss. When you turn ray tracing to extreme in Forza, it turns on world ray tracing, but only on the player character's car, which takes your car from looking great to oh my god amazing. And since your car is always shiny, always on screen, and a significant portion of the screen real estate to boot, you really feel the impact of ray tracing. And by limiting ray tracing to only the player car, the performance impact, as you can see, is minimal. Less than 11% without FSR, and less than 8% with it across all resolutions. Despite FSR doing next to nothing in this title at these settings, we still see the ray tracing mode provide near raster levels of performance. This is one game in our test where I feel confident saying, if you're not playing with ray tracing on, you're having a worse experience. Following Forza, we find ourselves at the opposite end of the relative performance spectrum, with Hitman 3 running ultra settings with ray trace sun shadows and ray trace reflections turned on. We see a brutal reduction in performance to less than a quarter of the rest of performance across the board, leaving everything but 1440p ultrawide at unplayable frame rates, and 1440p ultrawide making it to the lofty heights of unacceptable performance. Hitman 3 scales well with FSR quality settings, though not quite as well as Cyberpunk 2077. With 4K Ultrawide seeing an 83% improvement, and 1440p Super Ultrawide and 1600p Ultrawide getting a 59% improvement, leaving all three resolutions in unacceptable FPS territory, with 30, 40, and 44 FPS respectively. Only the 1440p Ultrawide managed to squeak into acceptable range. The visual improvements from ray tracing in this game are definitely not worth the performance penalty. Moving on, we have the very amusing Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy running at the Ultra preset with ray trace reflections on Ultra and ray trace transparent reflections turned on. This game manages to hold on to a lot more of its performance than either Hitman or Cyberpunk, keeping anywhere from 37% of raster performance at 4K ultrawide to 42% of raster performance at 1440p ultrawide, leaving 4K ultrawide and 1440p super ultrawide at unacceptable levels of performance, 1600p at acceptable, and 1440p ultrawide just making it across the line of smooth gameplay at a 60fps average. 
Turning on FSR quality in this game gives middle of the road scaling, with 4K seeing a 51% improvement, 1440p Super Ultrawide a 44% improvement, and both 1600p and 1440p Ultrawide a 37% improvement, moving our 4K resolution up into acceptable territory with our Super Ultrawide, and moving our 1600p results into smooth gameplay with our 1440p Ultrawide, putting both into comfortable FPS range for this game at 70 and 82 FPS respectively. While ray tracing in this game only affects reflections, there are numerous reflective surfaces in all the spaceships and stations you traverse which may make it worth the performance hit for many of the 1600p and 1440p ultra-wide resolution users. Finally, in our test suite we have one of the first ever ray tracing games, Shadows of the Tomb Raider, played at high settings with ray trace shadows on ultra. Here we see all resolutions maintaining nearly 60% of their raster performance leaving our 4K ultrawide the sole resolution below 60Hz, only managing 47fps. Both our 1440p Super Ultrawide and our 1600p Ultrawide are achieving smooth gameplay at 66 and 78fps respectively, with 1440p Ultrawide even achieving high refresh rates at 90fps average, leaving most resolutions in a pretty good place even before any AI upscaling. Speaking of which, the only option available to the 7900XT in this game is XESS, which we use the Ultra Quality preset that provides a meager boost of 14% at 4K Ultrawide and only single digit improvements at the lower resolutions, which doesn't manage to move any of the resolutions up into a new performance tier. I have to imagine with a proper FSR 2.4 implementation, it would have us playing at near raster levels of performance. That said, the game still has very playable frame rates for 3 out of the 4 resolutions, and it would really be up to the user whether the extra shadow fidelity is worth the performance hit. If you're a 1440p ultra-wide gamer with a 100Hz panel, then I would turn the ray tracing on. But if you have a 144Hz plus panel, then the extra smoothness of just raster performance may be more enjoyable. Now it's time to roll it all up and see where each resolution stands. Ray tracing performance without using some kind of upscaling technology is pretty much not an option at this point in time with none of our resolutions averaging a decent frame rate. With upscaling on the other hand, we do have some hope. At 4K ultrawide and even 1440p super ultrawide, it should be avoided in most cases, sadly. Though, there are the rare exceptions. 1600p ultrawide is a bit of a mixed bag. While the majority of games are quite playable, there are a couple that I still wouldn't want to turn on ray tracing. 1440p ultrawide, however, is in a spot where all games tested were either quite good experiences or workable at the least. At last, we get to the quintessential question. To ray trace? or not to ray trace. Well, if you're the owner of an RX 7900 XT, unless you're running at lower resolutions, I still don't think the cost of ray tracing is worth it. But wait, you might say, Scott, slow down. You haven't even talked about lower ray tracing settings or more performant versions of FSR. Well, both of those have their own drawbacks. In my experience, lower levels of ray tracing will either just not be better than their max setting raster equivalents or can often even look worse and still have non-insignificant levels of performance degradation. So I don't see much of a reason for worse performance for almost no visual upgrade. As for performance modes of upscaling techniques, I find that anything below the top settings to noticeably degrade the visual quality. So you're stuck with the balancing act of is a blurry image with artifacting, but has reflections and soft shadows, or a clean image with raster shadows and screen space reflections a better looking game. In my opinion, ray tracing must only be an additive experience. You can't be giving up some visual performance for another kind of visual performance for it to really be successful. Right now, we do have to give up a little bit of frame rate performance, but for ray tracing to really become the standard across all games, I believe we not only have to get to the point where ray tracing no longer loses performance, but when you turn ray tracing on, you're actually gaining performance because you're freeing up the shader cores to do other things. Now, that was my review of the RX 7900 XT. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe to get more videos like this in the future. If you have an idea for what kind of ultrawide content you'd like to see me working on, please leave me a message in the comments below. Also, all the products we talked about in today's video are in the description. Thank you for watching and have a great day.